this will be a video on solving first order linear ordinary differential equations. In the previous two videos on M files, uh, one each for script and function M files, I described how to write short MATLAB programs that could be used to solve first order ODEs. Uh, those videos exhibited the three modes that we will be using to construct the videos that uh, you will see in this course. Namely, first, handwritten material on a whiteboard. Uh, so we'll see that in a minute. Second, a static Word or PDF file. This is actually a Word file, which exhibits mathematical and or non-mathematical content. And finally, third, a live MATLAB M file containing both comments and MATLAB code, which when evaluated illustrates the topics at hand. So in this video, we will present the first bona fide math topic of the course, that is how to solve first order linear ODEs, and we will employ all three modes. All right, now I'm going to switch to PDF from Word because Word doesn't display mathematics so well, uh, whereas uh, we can do it very nicely with a tech file converted to PDF. Anyway, our uh, subject at hand is solving first order ODEs. So here's what a typical first order ODE looks like. An expression involving an independent variable t, an unknown function y of t, and its first derivative. And uh, this equation might or might not be able, you might be able to solve it for y prime explicitly. Uh, if you can, we say that the differential equation can be written explicitly. And in that case, we usually write it like that. So y prime is an expression involving t and the unknown function y. Uh, this uh, differential equation, this explicit differential equation, is called linear if f is a linear function of y. So if f is ay plus b, but of course we allow a and b to be functions of t. So generally we assume that a and b are continuous functions of t on some interval i, which might actually be infinite. Okay, it's common to rewrite uh, equation 3 with all terms involving y and y prime on the left-hand side, on the same side of the equation. Uh, if we do that, bring the a over, instead of writing minus a and b, we just change the notation a little bit. It's more common to write y prime plus p of t y equals q of t. Again, p and q are continuous functions on some interval i. We do this because the left-hand side is somewhat reminiscent of the result of doing a product rule for differentiation. Uh, we can make that more specific as follows. So let mu of t be any non-zero function on the interval. Then the solutions of an equation like this are unchanged if we multiply the equation by a non-zero function mu. So it's enough to look for a solutions of, equation, of an equation like that, where we're going to pick mu appropriately. And appropriately, comes from our motivation, we look at that left-hand side, and it sort of looks like the result of differentiating mu y. If we differentiate a product mu y, we get mu y prime plus mu prime y. So we'd like to pick mu such that mu prime t is equal to mu t p of t. If we do that, then the left-hand side will just be the derivative of mu y, and so this equation 5 can be rewritten in this form. The derivative of mu y is equal to mu times q, which is just the right side. And that equation is very easy to solve. It's just anti-differentiated. If you do that, you get that mu y is the antiderivative of mu q plus a constant of integration. Or, since mu is not 0, we can multiply by its inverse, or divide it out, and we get this expression. y is equal to constant times mu t inverse plus mu t inverse times the antiderivative of mu q, where mu is determined by this equation here, which is easily solved. Uh, if you look at this equation, it just you can think of it as d mu over mu equals p, so the anti-differentiate, log mu is the antiderivative of p, and so mu is e to the antiderivative of p, which is what we've written here in equation 9. Okay, summarizing what we've just said, that if you're looking for a solution to this differential equation, then what has to come out is a solution of this form 8, equation 8, where mu is given by equation 9. And conversely, if you specify mu by equation 8, where mu is given by equation 9, then in fact, y is a solution to the original linear differential equation. 
So we have found the general solution to the first order linear differential equations. Good saying again. Here's our equation. The general solution is this expression for any constant c, where mu is given by this expression here. And then we observe that the solution requires two anti-differentiations. Here's one. Here's the other. Uh, it requires two anti-differentiations in order for you to be able to, um, to give an explicit formula solution. Now, various stages of complexity may ensue. What do I mean by that? Well, first, you or MATLAB may be able to evaluate the integrals to, to obtain explicit formulas in terms of elementary functions. I'll say more about what that means in a moment. Or two, you or MATLAB may only be able to express the antiderivatives in terms of special functions. Again, I'll say more about that in a second. Or three, it might not be possible to evaluate one or both of the integrals in any closed form whatsoever. And all of those possibilities can happen. Now, what do we mean by elementary functions and by special functions? Well, elementary functions are just the usual functions of calculus. Polynomials, rational functions, trig functions, exponentials, logarithms, the functions you get by composing these or taking the inverse functions of them, and then all the functions obtained by, from these by algebraic combinations the usual functions of calculus. What do we mean by a special function? Well, special functions are those that arise as solutions of important differential equations, which cannot be expressed in terms of elementary functions, but which can be expressed in one of several ways, either as a power series, or maybe through an integral formula, or perhaps through some, as I say here, infinite or other complicated non-algebraic combination of elementary functions. Now, at this point, you should have a very good feel for what we mean by an elementary function. I mean, you've been encountering them since your first course in algebra, all the usual functions of calculus. Uh, on the other hand, special functions, maybe you haven't even seen that uh, term before, uh, but we will certainly encounter special functions, and you will meet them again later on in this course, as well as in your other advanced courses in math, physics, and engineering. Some of you may have already encountered special functions. Uh, some of those you might have encountered include the Bessel functions, the Legendre functions, or the Airy function. Finally, uh, whether your equation is linear or not, if you're given an initial condition to go along with the ODE, that is, if you have an initial value problem, then the constant of integration can be determined, and there is exactly one function that satisfies the initial value problem. Uh, we saw that codified in the fundamental theorem of existence and uniqueness. Uh, now, what we're going to do is give two concrete examples of linear equations and their solutions, as well as IVPs that correspond to them. In the first of these, we'll do it by hand, and the second, we'll turn it over to Matt. So we'll begin with a very simple example that we can work by hand. So here's the equation that we'll consider. y prime plus 1 over ty is equal to sine t. And the interval uh, that we will consider, we obviously have to avoid 0, so we'll consider t positive. So that's a nice interval on which our functions are continuous. p in this case is 1 over t and q is sine t. So let's use our recipes. We need to compute mu, which is e to the antiderivative of p. So that's e, the antiderivative of uh, 1 over t is log t, and e to the log t is just t. Uh, notice that's a function that's never 0 on this interval. And then uh, the next thing we have to compute is the integral of mu q. So that's the integral of t. q is sine t. And so that's a, a, an integral that you've done many times in calculus. You have to use integration by parts. So this is done by parts. I won't go through the calculus. 
But if you do that, the antiderivative turns out to be um, sine t minus t cosine t. So putting this all together, our solution, remember, is c times mu inverse, so c times 1 over t plus mu inverse 1 over t times the integral of mu q, which we just did. So that's sine t minus t cosine t. And there's the general solution of the original differential equation. Uh, these functions for any choice of real number c solve the differential equation, uh, and those are all the solutions. Now suppose we have an initial value problem, so let's suppose uh, y, for example, at pi is equal to 1. Then what does that do? It enables us to determine c. Well, y of pi, what happens if we put pi in here? We get c over pi plus 1 over pi times the sine of pi is 0. Uh, the cosine of pi is minus 1. So minus pi times minus 1 is just pi. So we get c over pi plus 1. And if that's supposed to be equal to 1, then c is equal to 0. And so the unique solution of the differential equation, together with this initial data, that is that initial value problem, is what you get by putting c equals 0 in the general solution. And so this function here is the unique function which takes the value 1 at pi and solves the differential equation. Now let's go on to something a little bit more complicated where we'll invoke mathematics of MATLAB. And now for the second example, this time we will use MATLAB. So here's a very simple uh, linear differential equation. y prime plus 2ty equals 1. And we're going to see that despite the very simple nature of this linear equation, which involves only the very simplest possible coefficients, nevertheless a special function arises in the solution. So here's the syntax. We clear all the variables. We close all graphics. We set up some symbolic variables, t, y, and y of t. And we solve the differential equation with d solve. And there's the preferred format for the command. Let's run it. it. Takes a second, and it's done. So let's find the MATLAB window. There's the solution. Constant times e to the minus t squared plus the square root of pi times e to the minus t squared times a certain special function evaluated at t divided by 2. This is an error function. Um, let's not go into the details of that function. We'll actually graph it in a minute using MATLAB. It's rather easy. Okay. So, but before I do that, let's just do a corresponding IVP. So same differential equation, uh, but this time with y of 0 equal to 1. If we run that baby uh, and then open up that lab, and you see that th this just forces the constant of integration to be 1. So we get e to the minus t squared plus the same term as before, again involving this special function. OK, and then next we graph it. So I just easy plot the solution. Let's do that on this section. And there's the graph. There's the graph of the solution. Reasonable graph. Looks like an odd function, which in fact it is. Um, but you can see that uh, MATLAB handles it uh, graphically and in fact numerically just as well as any uh, function, any elementary function. And in fact, we can plot a family of solutions. So I'm basically going to plot all the solutions where y of 0 is a, and a will go from minus 3 to 3. Uh, I'll let you read the syntax at another time. But I'm basically plotting these seven solution curves. Uh, let's do it. Takes the extra second. And about there it is. And you see the seven solution curves. Let's make it a little bigger. Again, MATLAB handles it uh, regardless of the fact that there are special functions involved. So uh, the commands dsolve and easyplot, which I've used here, are treated in greater deal, detail in another video. 
And final comment is as the course progresses and we encounter other examples of special functions, you will see that in most ways they are no more complicated, especially when it comes to dealing with them via MATLAB, uh, which I could spell better. Um, they are no more complicated than our ordinary elementary functions, which also could be spelled better. Thank you.